For more on the U.S. economy, we're joined now by Diane Francis, editor-at-large at Canada's National Post. She's also a senior fellow at the Atlantic Council's Eurasia Center. Welcome back to the broadcast. Thank you very much, Susan. What is the biggest opportunity for the U.S. economy in 2017? Well, I think it's going to, it's already seen it in the market. Markets usually uh, pre, pre uh, preface great economic growth and activity. And what the markets are saying is that the professed tax cuts corporately, cutting the corporate taxes in half, and some more personal income tax cuts are getting baked into the value of corporations on the markets. That's why the markets have jumped, and that's why they're there. Doesn't mean these things will happen for sure. There's still Congress, and there's all kinds of things involved. But it obviously is a very, uh, very buoyant thing for a market to have these huge tax cuts. In addition to that, the $1 trillion infrastructure bill is a very, very good um, economic recovery tool that makes a lot of corporations a lot more valuable. Donald Trump, we know, has hinted at what he would like to do. Whether he can get it done or not is another question, but he wants to raise taxes on trade, curb illegal immigration, increase the federal uh, stimulus. How will this play out? Well, you know, we're talking about the biggest player in the world. Um, I'm sitting up in Canada. I'm a dual citizen. I'm American. I live in Manhattan. I live in Toronto in Canada. You know, in Canada, we're quaking. We're quaking in our shoes. And everybody should be, because what he wants to do is bilateralize trade. No more multilateral, trilateral deals. So take NAFTA, for instance, which is Canada, Mexico, and the U.S. It used to be that Mexico and Canada could have a little bit more sway with the Americans if we united in what we requested. That's going to end now. He's going to bilateralize it. So it's little old Canada and big United States, little old Mexico and big United States. So guess who wins in a bilateral uh, co you know, con confrontation or conversation when the, the big guy is a giant? So well, that's how he's going to be bullying the rest of the world to get more for what he wants in the United States. Now, at the same time, I must say that at the other end, there are markets that he wants to sell American goods and services to. So he can't just, you know, steamroller over everybody. But it's going to be a very different world. Yeah, we will see if he's going to be a deal maker or if he will use diplomacy uh, as the president. But will he get this short-term bump term bump in the GDP, or, or will it be something longer lasting, do you think? Well, I think that he needs to make sure that the tax cuts he gives to corporations result in the repatriation of profits that are now offshore to avoid taxes. But then when they bring the money in, he's got to try and make sure that jobs and economic activity are created. Otherwise, what will happen has happened before. When tax cuts are given to corporations, they very often take that surplus money and just buy back their own stock to make themselves richer than they already are, and they don't create economic wealth. So he's got to accompany it with, with some pretty stringent requirements, which are very, um, which are something businessmen don't like to do, but he may, he may just be able to do that. The U.S. economy is increasing at around 2%, not what it was in the 80s and 90s, obviously. Uh, but with an aging workforce, the wage stagnation, and the increased cost of, of filling these jobs and living, where do you think we'll be, Diane, in 2017 this time? Well, let's just let's talk about that 2% because it's it's talked about in a disparaging manner. First of all, you take a Canada, which is a pretty good economy, but I don't even think we're going to grow much next year. Uh, but you, you let's look at the U.S. 2% added on to an economy that's $18 trillion in size is more growth than 8% in China, which is a smaller economy, an important economy, a big economy. But, you know, let's just get this straight. In absolute dollars, 2% of $18 trillion is a lot more than 2% of an economy of $6 trillion. And so, you know, 2% is nothing to sniff at, and it is a big, powerful country. Also, their unemployment rate is practically negligible. At 5%, they're the envy of the developed world. Believe me, that's, that's, almost, that's considered full employment. So the U.S. is doing very well, despite all the rhetoric during the campaign and so on. But, you know, he wants to goose it, if I can use that verb, uh, 
to, to get it to, to move even faster and to, to score more jobs. Well, Diane Francis, we're going to have to say goodbye for now, but thank you so much. Happy New Year to you. We appreciate your time.